So to stretch a function vertically, here's our function rule, f of x to a times f of x. So there is a number that we're multiplying f of x by. Remember, f of x is just fancy schmancy for y, or on my function, we're taking that function and then after we do everything to it, we're gonna multiply it by a. It's a stretch when that number in front of f of x is greater than one. So let's look at this. The function f of x is graphed on the coordinate plane, that's right here. The function c of x, that's in green, represents a vertical stretch of the graph of f of x. So if you think about taking a rubber band and just like stretching it vertically up, what happens to that rubber band, right? It goes up higher and it goes down lower, right? So the range of that rubber band is gonna be affected just like the range of this function is affected. So let's look at number 11, c of x equals three times f of x. Evaluate the graphs for each of the following. We're first gonna look at f of negative nine. So when x is negative nine, where is my graph? It's right here, negative nine, negative three. What about c of negative nine? Well, that's down here. When x is negative nine, y is also negative nine. Let's evaluate the function at f of, neg or f of positive two. We're looking at the graph in black, because that's the graph of f of x, f of two. Here's where x is two. Where x is two, y is zero. What about c of two? c of two, well, that's actually a point that they share. It's also on that x-axis. So c of two is also zero. What about f of negative three? f of negative three, well, here's where x is negative three. There's where my graph is. When x is negative three, y is positive one. What about c of negative three? There's where x is negative three. Here's where my graph is at negative three. Where is y? It's at positive three. So let's see if we can make some ob observations here. Looking at these, this data that we have gather gathered, I didn't change any of the x values, but what happened to the y values? With a three in front, what happened to each of these y values? Well, that was multiplied by three. Nothing happened here at f of two and c of two. What happened here at negative three? Also multiplied by three, but it, didn't, it did not affect f of two. Hmm, okay, that's a point that's on my x-axis. Okay, so describe the effects on each y value of f of x. Well, and where the intercepts affected, was the y-intercept affected, y or y not? So for this particular, when I vertically stretch a function by a factor of three, that's how I would say that, by a factor of three, each y value is multiplied by three. That's what happened here. All of these x values stayed the same. It's the y values that were affected. It pulled it up and it pulled it, it pulled it up and it pulled it down right, which affected our range. Was our domain affected? It was not, so let's write that up here. Domain not affected. Domain was not affected when we vertically stretched this function, our range was. So the x-intercepts were not affected. Why? Why do you think the x-intercepts were not affected? because y equals zero on the x-axis. And if I'm taking a number and I'm multiplying it by zero, three times zero, well, that's still gonna be zero. It's not gonna change, okay? The y-intercept was affected. So let's move on to a vertical compression, a vertical compression. So to compress a function vertically, here's what our function rule looks like. It's exactly the same. We're taking a number and it's out in front basically and our entire function is gonna be multiplied by that number. However, it's only for 
when a is between 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction. Okay, so when we have a fraction, a number less than 1, okay, but greater than 0 because we don't care about positive and negative, right? That's, that's the reflection part. So the function f of x is graphed on the coordinate plane. The function e of x represents a vertical compression of the graph of f of x. That should totally say f of x. So the function e of x represents a vertical compression of the graph of f of x. So looking at number 13, e of x equals 1 half times f of x. So here's a couple things that I notice. I notice that there is a number right in front of f of x. It's not inside the parentheses. So it's going to be a vertical dilation, if you will. How do I know it's a vertical compression? Because that number is a fraction. Okay, it's going to be less than 1. Evaluate the graphs for each of the following. f of 7. So f of 7 is right here. When x is 7, y is 2. e of 7 is right here. When x is 7, y is 1. What about f of 2 and e of 2? Well, here's where x is 2 and y is 0 for both graphs. What about f of negative 9? f of negative 9 is over here. When x is negative 9, y is negative 3. And then e of negative 9 is right there at negative 1.5, but I'm going to call it negative 3 over 2 just because I like improper fractions. It's the same thing as negative 1.5. So e of negative 9 is negative 3 over 2. So let's look at how each of these values were affected. What color do I want here? Okay, so notice that I didn't change any of the x values when I asked you to evaluate the function at these given points, but the y values did change. These y values changed, these y values changed. Well, what happened? We multiplied each y value by 1 half. Same thing as dividing by 2, right? Times 1 half. But it didn't affect these points right here, the points that are on my y axis, or I'm sorry, my x axis. For the same reasons, it didn't affect them when we vertically stretch a function. So when you vertically stretch or compress a function, is it affecting anything on your x-axis? No, it's not. The points are going to stay the same because that's where y is 0. And we're multiplying these y values by a number greater than 1 to stretch it or a number between 0 and 1 to compress it. So the x-intercepts were not affected. We're not affected because y equals 0 on the x-axis. The y-intercept was affected. Okay, so we are affecting, or it, we are changing uh, points. We are changing the y-values, okay? All right. Oh, and you know what? Right here, I should probably say some, write something here. Each y value is multiplied by 1 half. So when you vertically stretch or compress something, each y value is being multiplied by that scale factor or that number right here that's in front of f of x. Let's move on to the next one, horizontal stretches and compressions. So to stretch a function horizontally, here's what our function rule looks like. We're changing f of x to, we're multiplying that x by a constant or some number. But when we stretch it, that number is between 0 and 1, which means that number that's in front of the x is a fraction. Wait a second. We just looked at vertical stretches and compressions, and if it was a fraction, it compressed it. Again, when you're talking about the horizontal transformations, it just gets more confusing. So let's look at this. The function f of x is graphed on the coordinate plane. 
the function q of x represents a horizontal stretch of the graph of f of x by a factor of three. I'm stretching it horizontally. So now that rubber band, I'm not stretching it vertically, I'm stretching it horizontally. It's going to make it wider, okay? It's going to affect my domain, but my range is not going to be affected. So this is what really trips up students. It's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. How did I get that? That number inside the parentheses right here is one third. So Q of X equals F of one third times X. Well, it's actually, it, this actually represents one over K. So it's gonna be one over one third, which one divided by one third is three. So it's gonna affect it by a factor of three. So let's evaluate the function at these given points. So f of negative 2 is right here. When x is negative 2, y is 0. Okay. What about q of negative 6? q of negative 6, well, that's the function graphed in red. Okay. When x is negative 6, y is 0. Okay. So my y values are the same, but the x values that I, asked, that I chose to use are different. Okay. Let's look at f of 2 this other point over here on our x-axis, f of 2, well, that's 0. What about q of 6? Right here, that's 0. Okay, all the y values are the same. All right, now let's look at f of 0. So up here, f of 0, that's on our y-axis. What is y? It's 9. What about q of 0? also 9. So let's see what we're looking at here. Okay, so the y values are the same in all of these, but the x value that I chose to use because I knew the y values would be the same have actually been multiplied by 3. Same as here, right? So were the y values affected or were the x values affected when we horizontally stretched this function? the x values were affected. So describe the effects on each x value of f of x. Were the x-intercepts affected? Was the y-intercept affected? So each x value has been multiplied by 3. Each x value has been multiplied by 3. x-intercepts were affected and the y-intercept was not. So this is different than the last one. Each x-value has been multiplied by 3, and in this case, the x-intercepts were affected, and the y-intercepts were not. Well, on our y-intercept, that's where x is 0. So when I horizontally stretch or compress something, I'm multiplying that x-value by a number. Well, if x is 0, Anything times zero is just going to be zero. It's going to stay the same. That's why f of zero and q of zero just stayed the same, right? They're exactly the same. So let's move on to compress a function horizontally. Looks the same, right? f of x, the function rule is f times k of x, where that constant is inside the parentheses and affecting the x values, but in this case, we're compressing something and k is greater than one. So again, that's very different than when you vertically stretch or compress something. So let's just look at this. The function f of x is graphed on the coordinate plane. The function d of x represents a horizontal compression of the graph of d of x. That is not true. It's f of x by a factor of one half this compression factor represents 1 over k. So the function d of x represents a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. However, if you look at our function rule, d of x equals f times 2 of x, or 2 times x. And that 2 is inside our parentheses. When it's inside the parentheses, that's when we know it's affecting our x values. So in this case, though, the scale factor is not by 2, it's by 1 over k 
which is 1 over 2 because k is 2 in this case. So now let's evaluate the graphs for each of the following. f of 10. f of 10 is right here. It's at 3. And d of 5. Okay, well, that's right here. It's also at 3. Let's look at f of 2 and d of 1. f of 2 is right here. y is 0. d of 1 is right here. And y is 0. So these y values that I'm writing down are the same. But I, clearly you can see the x values are different. f of negative 6. There's where x is negative 6. f of negative 6 is positive 4. d of negative 3 is right here. And that's also positive 4. That is not negative 6. Let's try to do that one more time. That should be negative 3. Negative 3, oh goodness gracious, there we go, negative 3, positive 4. So when you're, we're looking at this, we see that the y values are the same, but the x values are what's different. Why is that? It's because this is a horizontal compression. It's horizontal, it's affecting our x values by a factor of 1 half. So as you can see, each x value has been multiplied by one half. Same right here. Each x value has been multiplied by one half. Y value remains the same. So what happened? What were the effects? All x values were halved. The y intercept was not affected. Why do you think? Why was the y intercept not affected? because that's where x equals 0. And since we're affecting, we're changing our x values, if I'm going to multiply our x values by 1 half, 0 times 1 half is just still 0. So it's not going to be affected. However, the x-intercepts were affected. And let's move on to a recap of all of these transformations.